My God, we just want today to just come into your presence. Lord, we want you just to take us uh, as clay, mold us and make us and shape us into whatever you want uh, us to be, to be able to fill us with your presence, to fill us with your anointing and your power. To, Lord, to be able to speak into our hearts, speak into our, into our lives that which you have for us. Lord, every one of us, you have a purpose and you have a perfect plan for our lives. We want to fit into that place where you want us to be so that we can see the mighty hand of God outstretched, so we can see a move of your spirit. And for that, we'll give you all the praise, give you all the glory. And everybody said, Amen. Well, last week, as you remember, I, I started to preach on uh, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And I really didn't even get through for God. <laughs> That's where, I, that's where I got to. But we started by saying, just if I can just go over quickly, just so that you can keep up with where we're going. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. But we're living in a very world, a world that's changing. But God never, ever changes. God's got a plan for us. And, and I believe that God's going to do some awesome things. There's some things about God that says, for God so loved the world. And David was saying to, today too that, it's not whether it's Trump or whether it's the Queen of England or that, but it's God himself that speaking to us that the almighty God, all-powerful God, that, that wants to somehow or other get a hold of people like you and me and mold us and shape us and make us into something that is so powerful that it's going to smash the enemy's plan. It's going to build the kingdom of God, and we're going to see an amazing revival that's going to touch people. Amen? That's what it's all about. So today, I, I really pray that we can do that. So I started to talk about who is God? Who is God? And we said God is sovereign. He is above all. He's uh, supreme. He's ruler. He has all authority. Do you believe that, believe that today? Uh, God is almighty. Almighty means that he has all power. Uh, I'm just going to quickly go over the headings that I went through. Uh, God is holy. He is a holy God, and God wants us to be holy as well. God wants to change our lives. God is just. You can never be, uh, never accuse God of doing something wrong or unfair. He is a just God. Uh, there's no deceit in him. God is merciful. The word merciful uh, means that he is gracious. He's slow to anger in Psalm 103 verse 8. Uh, he, he has a... a abiding mercy. Mercy oozes out of him. Mercy flows out of him. The Bible says his mercy will endure forever and ever and ever. That's, that enables God. His mercy enables God to forgive us. <laughs> How many people are glad he's full of mercy? Uh, so God is gracious. Grace is defined as the unmerited favor of God. God is gracious to us. So that means that we have unmerited favor of God all over us. If we're really, really honest, we would all say that none of us deserve that graciousness of God. Amen? I certainly do not deserve it. I make this remark many, many times. I needed to be saved. I was lost. So Ephesians 2 verse 7 and 8 says this. That in the ages to come, he might show or demonstrate the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Can you just grasp this for a little minute? That God himself wants to display or he wants to demonstrate the exceeding riches. Come on. The exceeding riches, it's, it's not just a little, a little thin thing. This is so impregnated, so powerful, so full of, it, it, it wants to ooze out of him the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. It is a gift of God. So if we can understand that. So let's, let's go. That's, that's for God. So if we finish that part. For God so loved. Love 
is one of the most misused and misunderstood words in today's language. It has to be, it is so misused. It is used so lightly and sometimes flippantly. Love really represents an uncomprehendable truth about God. Love, I believe, is so powerful. The most powerful force on this earth today has to be love. Love, a woman or a mother, will give her life gladly for her child. People will, will, will die for something that they love for. There are people today that, that have such a great love for their home and their surroundings and whatever they've got in there that they're staying behind to try to protect it. And some are losing their lives because of that love. It's misused, but it's, that's what it is. Ephesians 3.19 says, And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. To be filled with God's love. That everything that we see, we see through the eyes of love. And that's what helps God, that God, when he looks at us, he doesn't see our failures. He looks through the eyes of love, and he loves us unconditionally. How many people are glad about that? To be filled with God's love would make this world a much better place. We sing song, what the world needs now is love, love, love. Amen. One of the great expectations that I have about heaven is that it will be filled with God's love. There's nothing for me as, as a human on this planet to be able to say, if I come to church, to be able to come into his presence, to be able to lift up my hands and though I've done wrong and though I've most surely messed, missed it, done something stupid, which most of you would be aware of, <laughs> especially if you've been coming here for a while. But to be able to just come and lift up my hands and my heart and, and sense his love surround me. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Just let God's love surround us. And somehow or other, when in that cradle of love, everything, everything's okay. Everything seems okay. My great expectation of heaven is to be just God's love there. Ephesians 2, 4 says, For God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love with which he loves us, it's his great love. Everybody say great love. Towards us that would not leave us in a state of hopelessness. He gave his son to redeem us, gave his son to redeem us from destruction. It's his great love that will not leave us in a place where, where that, that thing just surrounds us and, and, and sort of it just dries us up and sucks the very life out of us. There's a lot of things today about mental health, a lot of stuff going on today, a lot of things that we never heard about before as the enemy pours out his fury and his wrath. As we were in the prayer meeting today at the back of the hall there, we were just re reflecting on what's happening with the floods and with the, with the drought and goodness knows what else is going on. It's, it's like as, as the enemy is pouring out his fury and his wrath. But somehow or other in the midst of that, God wants to pour out of, his, out of us his love. And it's that great love that he has towards us that he will not allow us or, or he will help us out of to take us out of something, to bring us into something. And Cyril, I'm going to use you as a demo if you don't mind. Cyril, after he lost his wife, Elaine, I, I was really concerned for him as I saw the grief and the pain, the loss and everything that he was suffering. And, and, and in the natural, it seemed... I don't know, it just seemed, how can you ever break that? How can you ever get out of that? 
And I, as, if, as if I'm watching him even now as he walks through those doors one Sunday morning. As he walks through the doors of the church and he, and he had, a, had a different look on his face and, and he looked at me and he said, I'm free. I'm free. That doesn't mean that he'll never grieve again. It doesn't mean that he won't feel the hurt. But somehow or other, God broke the, the, the thing that the devil was trying to put on him. That hopelessness, that, that, that thing that, that just broke him and caught, kept him down. But now, because of that love of God, because of God's revelation to him, it raised him up and now he can live above it and not underneath it. Amen. God wants us to live above our pain and our hurts and the brokennesses and different things like that. You see, we have not because we ask not. Some of the things that we ask is why. It's not why, it's help me through the pain. Help me through the sorrow. Some have been raped. Some have been abused. Some have been ripped off, lost everything. We used to sing a song, hold me close. Hold me close to you, Lord. Put your arms around me. I, I can't remember all the song, but it says something there will be stripped away by the power of your love. God, God's love, there's no substitute for God's love. If we somehow or other, in, in the turmoil, in the brokenness, whatever it is, start crying out, God, God, will you release me? God, will you, will you help me through this? And, 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 and somehow or other God can pick us up and take us there. Because that's God's love, amen. His love will not allow us to stay there. He wants to help us through. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him. See, there's an open heaven today. But there's also an open invitation to all. Whosoever means everybody. Whoever, whoever wants to. Every man, every woman, every child can come to God through Jesus Christ, His Son, and receive the free gift of salvation. Isn't that an amazing thing? You see, salvation isn't just to sort of be delivered from going to hell. God wants to come into our life in such a way He wants to heal us. He wants to deliver us. He wants to set us free from anxiety. He wants to set us free from everything that the enemy can pour out upon us. You know, the play that they were playing today, and I was just thinking this morning, and I wrote down a word, fear, into my hand. And really... The devil is more fearful than any human that's on this planet. He fears God with a tremendous passion. He fears the church. He fears you and me that if somehow or other we allowed God to take us out of, to take us into the supply of God, that if we could catch a revelation that the almighty, the all-powerful God could get inside of us, we would rise up and we would kick his butt that far that it would take him a week to find his way back. You see, the enemy is so fearful that a little baby that was born, he thought, man, this could be my end. And he did everything he could to get rid of that little baby. He must have really thought for a period of time that he had that I thank God that he'll never, ever overtake the plan of God. Amen. Jesus came not only to save us, he came to heal us. He came to heal us of our rejection, hurt, disappointment. You see, we carry a lot of things that Jesus has already delivered us from. You believe that today? And I don't believe that we have to carry it. There was a man by the name of Yong E. Cho. Who knows Yong E. Cho? Dr. Yong E. Cho had the largest church in the world. He was moving in a, in a miraculous 
uh, power of God. People, we went to the church one time there. I don't even think we went into the church. We did, couldn't get into the church, but we went to the church and there were 60 Greyhound buses outside that was just bringing in people, all parked in the car park. People everywhere. But you see, Yongi Cho was a Korean, and the Koreans had had a terrible time through the Japanese people during the war. And, and Yongi Cho and, and many others had seen their families and others uh, destroyed and killed and raped and, and all the mess that went on in their lives. But now Yongi Cho is born again, saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, running an amazing, successful church, and everything's going fine for him. And he had an invitation to preach in this Japanese, to go over to Japan and preach in this other church. It was a massive church. And Yongi Cho goes along there to preach the message and he gets up there to preach the word of God and he opens up his Bible and he started to speak and as he started to speak, he stumbled and, and words just wouldn't come out of his mouth. And all of a sudden, he just grabbed hold of the pulpit and he looked at the, all those Japanese faces out there and he started to yell out, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. And he started to cry uncontrollably. And as he cried, he started to say, you murdered my sister and you killed my father and you did all this. And, and, and the people, all of a sudden, there was a rumble and a roar as the presence of God filled that place and the people began to weep. And one by one, the leaders came out and they put their arms around him and they apologized. And, they, and, and, and there was a great healing and a great deliverance. You see, it's God's love that will not allow us to stay in the hurt. And that day, Yongi Cho had a great healing and a great deliverance. It says here, it says in Hebrews 7.25, Therefore he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through Christ. The uttermost means completely and forever. God wants to bring, I believe, a great deliverance and a great healing. And I know that in the church today, there are so many of us that carry hurts. I had an experience just a few weeks ago myself as I was invited to come into a situation and pray for somebody in a situation that those people had, had, had treated me wrong and bad and things like that. And I didn't realize, I thought I could just go in there and I thought I could just do this. But I want to tell you, I fell apart. But God's goodness did not want to leave me there. God's goodness does not. And friend, I want to tell you, it's a time, if we're going to see a move of God, if we're going to see 2020, if we're going to see God do some stuff, I want to tell you, it's a time to get on our faces before God. It's time to say, God, help me through, show me through, help me, whatever has got to be done, will you do it? Otherwise, we won't carry it. See, somebody nodding. Some people might have been through the mill. Some people might have been through some stuff. Forever, everything. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, If you seek me, you will find me. I really, I believe it's a time to seek God. God for total deliverance. Total freedom. I spoke the other week about that thing that was on one of the TV programs, Current Affair, where they were doing exorcisms. How many people know that we're going to see a lot of that again? A lot of hurts and that in people, you know. Only Jesus can help us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish. Perish speaks of that which can be destroyed. A lot of people out there are going to perish. Sin brings death and destructions. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, destruction. For we see many that are suffering from the weight of sin. See, unforgiveness is sin. And though you don't realize it, a lot of us carry unforgiveness. And just a few weeks ago, unrealizing it, 
I was carrying unforgiveness into a situation where I was trying to help. But it was the goodness of God that did not allow me to stay in that state. He had to reveal it to me. I didn't like it, but he had to help me until you realize it. And then you've got to say, God, I, I just want your mercy. I want your forgiveness. I, I want you to come and help me. Help me. Many people are suffering. I was suffering under the weight of sin. Hey, you think your pastor's sinless? <laughs> hey? You think he's perfect? Oh, boy. You see, many Christians suffer from lack of knowledge. Many people perish for lack of knowledge. Jesus only wants to set us free, not bring us into bondage of religion. Christianity is not about do's and don'ts. We don't just come to church and lift up your hands. Sing hallelujah. It's not, a, it's not do's and don'ts. It's not trying to be Christians. A lot of people put on their Christian face in the car park. Their religious facade. They might have had a fight two minutes before. You see, you can get a circus animal to jump through a hoop. Doesn't mean they enjoy it. I guarantee if that animal ever escaped from the circus, he will never go around looking for a hoop to jump through. Christianity is relationship. Christianity is reality, doing what is real, letting the presence of God get around your life. Oh, I might finish this today. 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. Old things have passed away, all things have become new. We used to sing a song, I found a new way of living. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everybody say everlasting life. Everlasting means eternity. That is time without end. Going to find all those new stars out there. <laughs> I think that's what they were talking about. Everlasting is time without end. We can't comprehend eternity. The word overwhelms us. 1 John 2.25 says this, and this is the promise that he, Jesus, has promised us eternal life. John 10, uh, 28 says, And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. This is what God wants to give us is eternity, it's total deliverance, it's total freedom. It's not just coming to Christ and being born again, it's coming to Christ and taking on everything that he represents. He represents healing. He says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. He is our provider. He wants to provide for you. He wants to deliver us. He wants to set us free. He wants to give us joy unspeakable and full of glory. He wants to break the strongholds and the bondages around our lives. He wants to release us into the, into his very, very presence. He wants to anoint us with, with the power of God. He wants us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. He wants to put something on the inside of you that out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living life, living water will flow. He wants to fill us so full with the fullness of God that that's all we think about, that's all we want to be about. It's all about Him, amen. Things will, this world will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. Today there is a loving Father with outstretched arms. His, I don't know if somehow or other, if we could just uh, close our eyes for a moment. 
There's a heavenly Father out there. He's got an outstretched arms and He's calling to you. He's calling to you. Will you come to me? Will you allow me to heal you? Will you allow me to, li- to deliver you? Will you allow me to pour my spirit out upon you? Will you allow me to raise you up? Will you allow me to put my power within you? Will you allow me to put my word within, within you? Will you allow me to, to, to cause you to become what I want you to be? Will you allow me? Will you allow me? He's calling us to himself through Jesus Christ. We have access to the Lord. Come under Jesus. Just give him your life. Give him your life. See, I believe that this is something that Christians must do not just once but continually. I I continually just give him myself. God, I want to just give you myself. I just give you my life. I give you my life. God, will you make something out of it? All I had to offer him was brokenness and strife. But somehow or other, God wants to make something beautiful out of our lives. Somehow or other, God wants to take us and, and, and make us into, into, into his house. Amen. I believe that as we close in 2019, I'm so glad for that encounter that I had a few weeks ago that I don't have to take that into 2020. I've been carrying that for a long time. You know, we used to, I used to make a joke a long time ago, pack up your troubles in your old kit bag and, and just, just go, go, go. Amen. But it's time, I believe, to, to pack up some rubbish. Get rid of some stupid, stupid stuff. I'll let God just talk to you for a second there. Get rid of wrong attitudes. Relationships that have gone sour. Be, be, the, be the peacemaker. Father, help us. Help us, Father. We, we see today your loving arms outstretched and you're, and you're drawing us to yourself and you're, you're calling us to come on in. You want to bring us into your very bosom. You want, you want to surround us with your love. For God so loved us. You love me so much, Lord, that you gave your son. That if I could believe in you, I would not perish, but have everlasting life. And Lord, we know that you said that the enemy comes to rob, to kill and destroy, but I've come that you might have life, life more abundantly. Lord, we just don't want human life. We want that that, that supernatural life, supernatural excitement. I just see today that God wants to pour His Spirit out in some of you. He wants, he wants to come even from your innermost being. I, I just see there's some folks here today and there's been like a dryness in the inside of you. There's been sort of a, I don't know where or what or how or when, but there's, there's sort of, if I can say it, it's, it's not confusion, but it's like confusion. But you're just, just wanting there, but God says, I want to fill you with the fullness of God. I I want, if you're thirsty today, come to me and I will give you something to drink that out of your innermost being, innermost being will flow rivers of living water. This spake here of the Spirit. God wants to stir up the Spirit. There's some people here today you need inside of you a stirring, a stirring, a stirring of the Spirit of God that God wants to stir you. He wants to stir you again. He wants to cause you to rise again. He wants to take you into something that perhaps you've left behind. Perhaps he might want to remove some stuff. I don't know what he's going to do. All I know is that his arms are outstretched towards us. Call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Come to Jesus. Give him your life today. Amen and amen. You are my desire. We're just committed to this church. Committed to you. No one else will. God speaking to you this morning. Why don't you just come? Come and let God fill you again. Because nothing else could take you. Don't be shy. Just come. To feel the warmth in your 
Some people need to feel the warmth of his Just embrace. Help me find a way. Help me find a way to bring me back to you. Oh yeah. I just want to just say this. You don't have to leave a banqueting table empty. If you're in a smorgasbord, there's food everywhere, it would be silly to walk away and say to somebody, I'm starving. I just want to say this, that sometimes we are our own worst enemy. Because we have not, because we ask not. Sometimes we want to just fight through it and grit our teeth and be tough, whatever. Friend, I believe that there's an invitation here today. I might not have preached it so good or I might not have been able to explain it. But God, His arms are outstretched towards us, inviting us to come. You know, if you're thirsty inside, if you're dry inside, well, have a drink. Have a drink. Just have a drink. So while we're singing this again, I just want you to be open. You know, I thank God that God is a God of restoration. And all God needs is a vessel, a vessel that He can fill, a vessel that's willing, a vessel that's prepared to say, God, I can't do it myself but I know you can. So I'm going to open my heart afresh. I'm going to open my heart again. I'm going to cut the bit behind, leave behind that which needs to be left behind, and I'm going to go forward. I'm going to go forward. I'm going to see your hand and I believe you're going to see the hand of God mighty on your life, son. I believe God will touch you in such a way. He's going to put a mantle over your life, a mantle that will draw, gather, and deliver in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Draw me close to you. This is your opportunity. Never let me go. Say that I'm 